Right, mate. So, uh, introduction into air brushing. So, it's it's literally uh, going to be like five, ten minutes. Is this one? Uh, I've got my camera. I've got my phone. I've got my phone on a block of wood with a sheet of sort of polystyrene stuff, and I've got this little one in seventy two. Okay. Uh, as far as the equipment is concerned, hang on, drink a tea. As far as the equipment is concerned. Uh, a relatively inexpensive airbrush will suffice. This is a Bark Sharp 186. It's got my big colour cup on because uh, this is the one that I cut my teeth on. But uh, this is the one now that I use for gloss, for gloss coats. And you can see that it's got interchangeable cups. All right. Now, when I used to shoot with this for paint, I had a, a much smaller cup on. Uh, right, so question number one. You've seen an airbrush that's got a colour cup attached. Does it make a difference? No, makes no difference whatsoever. Obviously, it's the, the benefit of this is that, that big colour cup. Uh, it, it, it holds a lot of material. Okay. There's a needle inside there. Inside there. At the range from 0 0.015, which is tiny, up to... 0.8 which is enormous uh, and this has got a 0.2 in it okay uh, I do believe you've got loads of little things going off here so what's what so that's your that's your trigger and that's where your uh, air hose connects on and I'll show you that in a minute uh, and this valve here uh, you just leave it fully open uh, that is the amount of paint that comes out because uh, there's a little sort of seal in here. Obviously, the more that you tighten that in, uh, the more uh, it restricts the amount of paint. Uh, little 0.2 needle in size, uh, inside. The smaller the needle, the finer the line. So you've got 0.015, which is tiny. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, all the way up to 8. A good old round needle size is 0 0.2. A 0 0.2 will let you do a 1 in 72, a 1 in 48, and even a 1 in 32 and a 1 in 24. Okay, I've built some proper big kits. Uh, the 32 scale Tornadoes, a 24 scale uh, Spitfire, a 24 scale Stuka and they were all done with a 0.2 so that's a good brush to sort of cut your teeth on uh, if you will for want of a better word uh, and that's a Bark Sharp 186 okay I'm going to just pop that to one side <coughs> so what I'm going to show you I'm going to show you my other airbrush which is this one this is a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity and you can see straight away smaller cup and the reason that there's a smaller cup on that is because uh, when I do paint work, even like I've just done on the Tiffy, uh, I've, I just do, I don't do a full coverage. I just do a little bit of painting at a time. This is a quick release connector that can be beneficial because uh, it's literally just a matter of doing that and it saves unscrewing all this. Okay, as far, uh, it's exactly the same, down for air, and back for paint down and back it is that simple okay like that and i can feel the air and listen you can hear that as well so it's basically that's it when you press down air comes out and when you pull back paint starts to come out so it's like a clutch on a car so when you go down you put your clutch in and when you start pulling back it's, it's like your car moving away until you get to full speed and then it it's that simple okie dokie uh, as far as paint thinning is concerned you can see over there I've got a bottle of uh, lacquer thinner okay and just here in front of me uh, what first paint that I've come to I've got a bottle of Tamiya X F85 which is rubber black and that's what I'm just going to paint this in Okay, as far as paint thinning is concerned, when you buy when you buy a bottle of Tamiya, 
uh, it's only full up to about that white label there maybe just a little bit less actually and all you do is you just fill it up to the top with thinner put the lid on mate shake it like that until it's well shaken and that's it then that's that's good to go for the rest of the life of that bottle so my pressure is set at 18 psi and when you buy a compressor uh, preferably one with a tank on you just set it to 18 psi attach your hose to one end attach the hose to the gun at the other end uh, and that's it you're literally good to go okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to run a, a little bit of you can hear me taking the lid off and i'm just going to run a little bit of thinner through this airbrush to make sure that it's nice and clean and that it's spraying all okay now i haven't got my air booth set up okay because i basically spray in the, my garage and you can hear if you listen you can hear that's the remnants of the liquid coming out <coughs> excuse me again so painting so you've bought yourself a compressor and an airbrush and you've put your paint in and you're thinner into your paint you've got it a shake like you do drink a tea and then you think right this is it i'm going to take the plunge okay so i haven't got my glasses on i better put my glasses on haven't i so in your color cup uh, i'm trying to do this on camera through my phone and look over the top at the same time a little bit of paint and you get a little bit of spill and you can see it there look mate so tip number one is to have at the side of you a roller blue roll just so that you can keep that nice and clean and tidy simple as that and then before you go on to model either wear a rubber glove or use a little bit of this so when you go down for air no happens when you start to pull back right you can see that paint's coming out and then it's just about keeping this finger keep it still right until you get in coverage like this it is that simple now so when you go down look watch my finger watch watch my finger down for air and look at the paper towel now nothing there when i start to pull back look like this and the more you pull back look look at that now can you see how that's saturating that's because i've pulled all the way back for painting then down for air right and once you start to pull back and all i'm doing i'm moving my left hand with modeling it and i'm moving my right hand as well and you can see and all i'm doing this is a mist coat okay so you know that tiffy i've just done where there's like 55 shades of gray on it that's because i'm just i've painted that in mist coat all right i want to get leading edges here like that and then come back i don't want to put this black base on too deep because obviously i've got panel lines in there and i want to be able to put a wash in all right so all i'm doing i'm hoping that you can see and all i'm doing is just this look up and down moving my left hand moving my right hand and then i'll get a little swirl across like that i can see that inside there is not done I'm gonna do that. Okay, and I'm literally just going forwards and backwards. All right, right thin, right thin coat. All right, mate. And again, I'm gonna go over the top, that side. Very thin coat. You can see that that's hardly on. All right, and I'm literally just. I've got to stop saying that anti literally. Alright, so up and down. Thin coat, mate. I'm checking inside my colour cup and I've still got paint in there. Okie dokie. 
forwards and back ones like this. And I just want a really thin coat on there. So I don't want to flood those panel lines with paint. Not too much, because obviously I want it I want it to take a wash in a bit. Alright. Up and down, mate. Come right now. I think, well I'm saying I think, I'm hoping I've put some micro crystal canopy coverage stuff onto canopy. Otherwise I've just painted canopy and I'll not get it off. But it don't matter, don't matter, it's just a test bed. Alright. Now distancing the further you are away when I go down like that I'm really having to press on and pull back but on the other hand if I got in really 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 close like this down for air right I can literally do this look I can super concentrate on tiny little areas like that okay but again distancing I'm about three inch away there mucker all right and just for general basic coverage down for air back for paint and that's a dual action airbrushes that one you can get single action airbrushes you can get gravity fed, you can get all sorts. But just for sake of argument, I'm just using a gravity fed two stage airbrush. Right, so let me turn my camera around because it's spinning around because I've got my airline here. And I've got it all set up on a piece of blow tack. Now, so what's the difference? Well, that paint's dry. Mate, that paint is dry. Okay. So, little thing go. Oh, now then, did you hear it? It's run out. So, I'm not going to do the rest of it. Right, what I'm going to do is... Look, because that's dry. Right. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to put some isopropyl into my airbrush. Into it, colour cup. About halfway up. I've got some cotton buds here and all I'm going to do is get a quick clean no major that's just putting ISO in sticking a cotton bud in and rummaging round until it makes a funny squeaking noise like that listen okay and that's a, that's a shallow clean if you watch that video that I've sent you on cleaning you'll figure it out but lid on this one right and then as far as let me just squeeze that through and then as far as uh let me just see if i've got uh let me pick a color it's all right i'm just oh right, here we go that'll do what we got here we've got an xf19 okay now mine's in a dropper bottle because those paints uh, I struggled to get lid off so I bought a shitload of these and poured paint into that with thinner already so it's already thinned and already so I've just squeezed a little bit into my colour cup where's my camera right okay so I've got that there and I'm just going to shoot it on the back of my table so that I know that I'm good and then so on here then I've got in so down for air and I've got an individual panel there and because I'm hardly pulling back there's only a little bit of paint coming out. Right? So like that. Like that. And cross there. And the closer in I get, the finer the line that I get. Okay, like this look. So now what I'm doing, I'm just painting individual panels like this. And all I'm doing is I'm pushing down on trigger that push the air through. 
and then I'm pulling back for paint and I'm hoping that you can see it because I'm looking over the top of my phone like this right, and all I'm doing down for air back for paint and I'm staying away from panel lines ok let me see if I can find another panel there we go so all the way across there look like this Okay, and that is a tiny little panel there, so I'm just going to go into there like that, and then down there like that. Then what have I got up here? I've got another panel here like this, and one here like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm painting individual panels in like that and I'm leaving the panel line without any paint in it. Okay, I'm gonna come across the top of here like this. So that's one method of painting. And then other one is to do, so look at that now, okay. And then on the other side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what's called the mottling and that's getting him really close like this. Let me just make sure that you're on camera. Getting in really close like this, and I'm basically doing this, which is getting in close, down for air, back for paint. Okay. And instead of doing individual panel lines, I'm doing little squiggles. You can see, hopefully you can see the, like where's my camera? There, you can see the effect. Right, like this, random little shapes, just keeping my hands sort of like going a little bit, and you can see the difference. Okay, then what you do to get your final coverage on is don't forget if you're coming close, you're getting that, if you come out distant, you're getting a, a full coverage. So, down for air, when you come back for paint, then right, and you're going side to side. It's hardly laying any paint down, mate. Right, down for air, back for paint. And when you're coming across like this. And because I'm down for air and hardly putting any paint on. Right, what it does is it leaves those panel lines a little bit more pronounced. Try and get your own camera. Okay, so that you can see. So if that looks a bit too dark for you, down for air, back for paint. Another mist coat on, like that. So that you get that. Okay, and then on the other side, exactly the same. Down for air, and when you pull back for paint, you can see, hopefully, we're getting you on camera. You can see, and look at my distance there, I'm chopping miles away. Right. And you've got your two techniques there on how to make your paint do that sort of depth. It has depth, it has depth to it, so that it's not a single colour. Okay, and then you've got that one look. Now, again, if you're looking and you'll think, nah, that looks naff. I prefer this side, not this side. You can always go on and add a little bit more like this. I've still got quite a bit of paint in my colour cup, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over this, all right? Because this is what, uh, I'm just going to paint that without any effect I'm just literally up and down now look I'm just literally up and down down for air back for paint and I'm just keeping my hand moving up and down like that just to get a and you can see that I've got colour going on okay and this is how easy it is and then I'll come right other side down nose of it back down these little pile on things here, down these little, like that. 
I'm literally hardly pulling back for pain at all. Uh, my finger, if you imagine a clock face, 12 o'clock straight up, yeah. And one o'clock, you know where one o'clock is. And I'm not even pulling my finger back to from 12 to one. I'm literally putting me down for air and I'm literally pulling back to like five past 12. It's so small and you can see I'm just doing this. Okay. Like that. What I want to do, I'm gonna put my cleaner isopropyl. When you look on eBay, it's uh, it's about a tenner for like two liters or whatever. Uh, and you only need like a, a thimble full after every every pain and you just pour it in down for air back for pain and while you're expelling it out by pulling back um well i'm sticking the cotton bud in i'm sticking the cotton bud in and you need a swish around and you can hear it okay that's expelled so that is a gray that's on there Okay, and again, I'm going to put my airbrush down, but you can see, bone dry, right? Not waiting for anything, it's dry. And then just one more, so let me just have a look. I'll do a NATO, I'll do a NATO green. And I've got it in my dropper bottle here, look mate, NATO green. Okay, I'm going to give it a check, so that the thinner that's in, inside mixes with the paint because when you put thinner into these paints it's like the oil and water job you know like where oil sits on top of water well, it's exactly the same with this and to reactivate it you just get a good shake so a little bit of nato green in back to subject right and down for air right in fact i'll do it on here just to show you down for air back for paint and you can see it's hardly coming out look if i do that down for air back for paint it comes out very fine more more i pull back on my finger more comes out all right mate and what what we'll do is we'll just do a little bit of camo in on here like this and you i haven't even had to mask off right Like this, let me get your on camera. Okay, and we'll go across here like this, and then down here, like that. And I'm literally just letting the paint do the work, like that. Across the top, and then we'll go down here on the nose. Under there like that. And we'll put it to there. And put a bit more demarcation there. And we'll have one on the side of there like that. Like that. And we'll bring that one up. And it is that. We'll put that line up like that, and then down here like that. And mate, I am not kidding. It is literally that easy. I've literally just painted half a bird there in full camo in three different colours in about five minutes. All right, down for air, back for paint. Right, like this. And then again, what I'll do underneath is, I'll just show you, I'm trying to get some good light on the subject here. When you go down for air, and you'll start pulling back, you can put, watch out, if I come in, if I come in a bit closer. Like this.
So when you think of that Euro fighter belly that's got all them white panels on it, okay, uh, you can see how it's done. And that is how easy airbrushing is. There's no dark art about it. There's no rocket science about it. Now listen to me airbrush. Can you hear it squealing a little bit? Not because it's run out of paint, dude. Okay, and that is how easy it is. Uh, I can't even sit here, I've made it look simple. I can't sit here, you know, oh, there's a lot more to it than that. Than in, that's it. You buy a compressor, Preferably one that's got a tank on it, uh, because that stop. If you listen now, listen. So I'm shooting the paint, but my uh, my compressor's knocked off, and that's because the tank is full of air. And if you listen now, it's just kicked back in. Listen. You probably can't even hear that anyway, because it's that that quiet. These little airbrush compressors are, are quiet, uh, and all I'm doing now is just to clean it. Like I say on video, I'm literally, let me hold it there, I'm down for air, I'm back for paint, and I'm just giving it a little swoosh around like this and making sure that, and what I'm looking for is that my napkin, right, is not shooting any paint on it, like that. And it isn't, it's totally clear. Rod, that is how easy it is to airbrush compressor, airbrush cheap one to start with you don't need to be spending 300 pound uh you can get a, a decent airbrush you can get a 186 a bark sharp 186 kit uh, which is the airbrush the different size color cups the air hose the needles the spanner the, absolutely everything for 50 quid off their website uh bark sharp you can get uh <coughs> You can get a compressor from them as well, about 80 quid. So for the kit, 50, compressor, 80. So what's that, 130? It's about 130 quid, mate. Uh, you, you can see how easy it is. You can see how bone dry it dries so quickly. Drink your tea. So, so when you come, I'm gonna just spin this round there. I'm gonna take this out of here. About 28 minutes. So when you come, mate, right, and you're looking at stuff like this, with all the different shades, I've got, just got it stuck in a bit of polystyrene at a minute. And all this dark, you see, I just need to be careful. So here, look where it's dark. Down here where it's dark. And then you've got light, light bits in front. Let me zoom. And you've got your light bits all over and your dark bits round those panels. Okay, come on, focus your bugger. There you go. All right. Uh, and, and that's literally all it is. That is airbrushing, mate. Uh, I'll spin you around. Like that. It's, it's an absolute, it's a doddle. All them people on, on Facebook and YouTube and like I said to you in text, it's like a dark art, is it free? It's nowhere near a dark art. It's a, a tank, a gun, pour your painting, thin your paint, pour your painting, set your pressure to about 15, 16, 18 PSI, down for air, back for paint, off you go. It's a piece of piss. I'd be here for you, and you know I would. If uh, if you if if you got if you said, you know what, Mark, you know, mate, you've convinced me. I'm gonna do it. <coughs> it's uh, I, I won't take you down a path that I thought that you won't be able to do it because my daughter, my daughter's been, my daughter's 16. She's been airbrushing for the last four years, uh, and she can do it. 
down for air, back for paint. If you decide to go that way, if you decide and you say, yeah, I'm going to do it, then I'll support you. All right. Just let me know one way out of a cocker. No pressure. <laughs> Don't want to pressure you into buying something. It's, it's entirely up to you. All right, cocker. It's that easy. Cheers, mate.